In 2018, a tragic incident occurred during a plant startup operation following a three day maintenance shutdown at a paper mill in New South Wales. An operator was performing routine checks around a tank inside the paper mill. The inside tank was being filled with recycled process water, known as filtrate, from a larger tank outside of the building. Filtrate contains very small particles of wood fibre, organic material and chemicals. As the inside tank was being refilled, an operator noticed that filtrate was running down the side of the tank. A co-worker climbed up the ladder to inspect the top of the tank to determine where the filtrate was coming from. After several minutes, the co-worker had not returned from his inspection. From a nearby platform, the operator saw that his co-worker was lying motionless on the top of the tank. The operator immediately telephoned the control room for assistance. It was not known to the operator why his co-worker had collapsed. An emergency response was initiated and two other workers climbed on top of the inside tank to render assistance. Both of these workers also collapsed. Other workers at the mill attended the tank and all three unconscious workers were rescued, one at a time, with an elevated work platform. Each rescue took considerable time due to difficulties caused by the restricted access at the top of the tank. Workers performed CPR until emergency services arrived. Two of the workers suffered fatal injuries due to exposure to high concentrations of hydrogen sulfide gas. The third worker recovered fully following two weeks of hospitalization. What led to the incident? The filtrate had been sitting stagnant in the outside tank for three days. The temperature and pH levels in the tank facilitated the growth of microorganisms. Low levels of oxygen allowed the type of microorganisms to grow that generated hydrogen sulfide gas, which remained in the filtrate solution. Laboratory tests of the outside tank filtrate showed lethal concentrations of hydrogen sulfide can occur after just one day. During startup, filtrate was pumped into the inside tank at high velocity. The turbulence from this process and the pressure drop between the two tanks allowed the hydrogen sulfide gas to be released from the filtrate solution. A blanket of hydrogen sulfide gas formed on top of the filtrate. As the inside tank was filled, more gas was released, eventually escaping through the manhole, vent and a crack in the side of the tank. Hydrogen sulfide can be formed and released when certain types of anaerobic bacteria break down organic material. Anaerobic organisms are those that live in environments that lack oxygen. There are many processes that may produce hydrogen sulfide, including agriculture and farming, wine and food production, sewage treatment, and manufacturing using organic products such as wood. At low concentrations, hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten egg gas. At higher concentrations, it is odorless and may render a person unconscious in a short time. Lack of odor at high concentrations poses a serious risk to first responders. Exposure at high concentrations affects the lungs and requires urgent medical attention. An investigation into this tragic incident identified a number of contributing factors. Hydrogen sulfide was generated anaerobically, which means without oxygen, by microorganisms in the outside tank during the shutdown period. No biocides were added to the filtrate in the outside tank that would help control the growth of microorganisms. There was a lack of aeration of the filtrate in the outside tank. Liquids and gases were not adequately contained within the inside tank. The space above the inside tank was not designated as a confined space. A confined space can exist in any industry and is not just limited to inside a tank, vessel or pit. It is recommended that businesses review their workplaces and operations to identify all potential confined spaces. Consider the potential for hazardous environments to form around organic materials and implement measures to eliminate or minimize these risks such as aeration and addition of biocides. Provide a system to monitor and manage stored organic materials. Provide an adequate ventilation exhaust system to areas where hazardous gases may be present. Eliminate or manage the risks associated with entering, working in, on or near a confined space by conducting a risk assessment, including gas measurement before entering a confined space.
issue a confined space entry permit before any person enters a confined space and ensure the permit contains information including the measures to control the risks. Develop a rescue plan before entry to all confined spaces. Educate and instruct workers on assessing dangers before responding to an incident and placing themselves at risk. It is important that businesses understand their obligations. Guidance is available from New South Wales Work Health and Safety Regulation 2017, Safe Work New South Wales Code of Practice Confined Spaces, Safe Work Australia Workplace Exposure Standards for Airborne Contaminants, and Australian Standard AS 2865 2009 Confined Spaces. For a copy of the Code of Practice and other relevant information, please go to our website, safework.nsw.gov.au. This animation was produced as a result of a District Court of New South Wales order and in conjunction with Safe Work New South Wales.